So now we're going to look at what happens if we multiply a function of x times a function of y. So for example, suppose we wanted to graph uh, z equals x times y squared. So we know that z equals y squared is just that parabolic cylinder. What happens when we multiply by x? So let's take a look at some traces again. Uh, so let's look at y and z. So let's see, when x equals zero here, uh, we get sort of an interesting case where z is going to equal zero and we're just going to get a horizontal line. Now if x equals one, then we're going to get z equals y squared, which is our basic parabola. If x is equal to two, now we're going to get two y squared. Now this is a vertical stretch of this parabola, so we're going to get a steeper looking parabola here where y is two. Uh, and it might actually be helpful here to look at a case like x equals a half, right, which is going to give us a vertical compression and a flatter parabola here. Not very well drawn, but there we go. And uh, we get that parabola there. Now here if x equals something like negative one, now we're getting a vertical reflection along with our, along with our uh, stretch. If x equals negative two, z is going to equal negative two y squared. We're going to get a vertical stretch again. And uh, you sort of see that what's uh, changing here is not a shift of the parabolas, but rather a stretch of the parabolas corresponding with the x's. So let's see what that actually looks like here. So here's our basic parabolic cylinder. Now let's try stretching it by x. And you'll see that uh, when x is either large positive or large negative, we're getting a very large stretch of those parabolas. Uh, if x is um, uh, closer to zero, we're getting something much flatter. Now let's actually give this a slice here. So we're going to slice the graph for a value of x. Here we see that if x is very large and negative, uh, we get this very big stretch of the graph. As the x increases, the, the parabolic, the parabola is not stretched as much, so it's going to be flatter. As x becomes positive, then we get the more and more stretched vertically parabolas all together. This is the type of shape we're getting. We're stretching the parabola by that line. So now what would happen if we stretched by a different function. So let's try something like z equals, uh, let's try sine x times y squared. So now uh, the stretch on y squared is going to depend upon the values of sine, which we know vary between negative one and one. And so we're going to expect my traces to oscillate between uh, like when x is zero here, we're going to have a horizontal line. When x is pi over two, we're going to get a positive. Uh, when x is pi, we're going to be back to zero. When x is three pi over two, we're going to have a negative stretch. x is two pi, we're going to be back to zero. And in between, we're going to get these sort of flatter ones. Let's see what this is going to look like. So we got sine of x times y. Let's extend our x's out uh, a little bit so we can get a better idea of what's going on here. And what we see is that parabolic shape being uh, stretched by the sine function. So if we take some traces, some slices here and allow my x to vary, you can see that as my x increases, we're stretching that parabola, positive one, negative one, right, zero, going backwards uh, to zero, to po negative, to zero, to negative, to zero, to positive. And all together we're getting this shape where we're stretching uh, the parabolas by the sine function. Now you can also think of it about it the other way. You can think of it as stretching the sine function by the parabola, which means we're going to have a very large amplitude parabola on one end, coming down to zero, and then a l very large amplitude parabola on the other side as we stretch by the values of that parabola.